No. Oh, what have I let myself in for? Now, we are chuffed to bits today to invite a very special guest here with us. He's one of the best-known comic actors in Britain. It's star of stage and screen, Mackenzie Crook. Thank you very much. Hi, Mackenzie. Cheers. Oh, thank I you know. for coming to join us. On yes. My Monday. pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on our first show. Absolutely. This is a great privilege for us. And people are going to ask why we've got an actor onto the show, but you are wildlife crazy, aren't you? Yeah, and I always have been. It's always been one of my biggest passions from when I was a kid. I've just been so into the natural world and natural history, and I could very easily have gone in that direction. I, I became an actor, but I, yeah, I would have very happily have been a, um, I don't know, a zoologist, a naturalist. What well, you're basically saying is that you're after my job, aren't you? I would, I, yeah, I don't think I'm quite as brave as you. You do have a good taste. <laughs> but your acting talents have taken you all around the world. Pirates of the Caribbean was filmed at very exotic locations. Did yeah. you encounter lots of wildlife? While you're yeah, filming. we did. I mean, we spent a lot of time out at sea in tropical waters, and so, you know, we saw whales and sharks. There was a point, I remember, where I was being filmed in a rowboat with another actor, and suddenly all the crew jumped out of the water and jumped onto dry land, and there was a six-foot hammerhead shark <gasps> circling, our, circling our rowboat, which I was incredible. I mean, and then another time when we were filming on a beach and there was a pod of humpback whales behind us suddenly started breaching out the water. Wow. And the director told us to ignore the whales. Please, will everybody ignore the whales? <laughs> it's a very difficult Easy said thing than to done. Do. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. It's not the average instruction you get on no. a job, <laughs> is it? <laughs> but it's not all exotic animals for you, is it? I mean, you were really started in your own back garden. That's right, yes. And, and where I grew up um, in Kent, you know, I spent all the time after school down at the local river, scrubbing about, catching fish and crayfish and, and yeah, just getting into the, the amazing British wildlife. And we have got some amazing wildlife in this we country. really do. I mean, you've even bought your own woodland, haven't yes, you? Yes, yes, I have. Tell us more about that. It was, uh, I've always wanted a sports car and a few years back, I found myself in a position to buy a sports car and I suddenly thought, actually, as an environmentalist, I can't justify that. I can't call myself an environmentalist and drive a gas guzzling car, yeah, you know, yeah. so I bought the exact opposite of a sports car, which, as everyone knows, is a woodland. A woodland. And, yeah, I just bought it to conserve and manage as a habitat for British wildlife. And do you spend much of time, much time there? As, as often as I can get up there, yeah. I mean, it gets on with itself. It doesn't need me there, but, uh, yeah. but whenever I can go up there and, and, and observe it, have a look around, it's great. You've camped out there as well, haven't you? Yes, yeah. With your son? Yeah. Yeah? Wow, was it scary? Because I don't think I'd fancy... Uh, spending much time in the nights in the woods it's very isolated and very dark you know it's away from away from streets and street lamps so there's yeah you hear odd noises which you can't identify in the night yeah so. did you have any interesting encounters with wildlife during your camp out just that i mean there's there's lots of noise there's wood ants we have some huge colonies of wood ants and they're like the biggest ants you get in in the uk they're huge and they're everywhere. They carpet Ooh. the floor. The floor is moving. Mm. Did you yeah. ever try the trick of putting your hand over the top of the, of the nest? I haven't, no. Because if, if you put your hand down really close to the nest, then they'll actually spray you. And if you smell your hand, it smells just like vinegar because yeah, that's right. what they're using yeah. to, to yeah. repel you. And, and it's not just those insects that you've uh, actually got to look at in your woodlands, have you? I mean, you've got a moth trap, haven't you? I have got a moth, moth trap, trap, yes, which I don't often admit, but I know you're the kind of man that would you appreciate that. You can admit it that. to me. I do appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. What's, you what's was, the coolest moth that you've seen in your trap, then? Um, I had a Jersey tiger moth. Oh, in there, wow, which, very bright colours. Yeah, incredible. It, you know, it looks like it's from a rainforest or something. And, and there's apparently only very small pockets of Jersey tiger moss on the mainland. You know, they, 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 you find them in Jersey. But, yeah, and hawk moss and elephant hawk moss. Yeah. Wow. That's Look another super brightly coloured yeah, one. Yeah. He's a man after my own heart. I know. <laughs> and you love your woodlands. But today, instead of sending you to the woodlands, we thought we'd bring the woodlands to you. Right. Have a look at our lovely woodland. No expense oh. spent on that <laughs> yeah. to make you feel, feel like at home. <laughs> anyway, I've got a bit of a challenge for you boys, so could you pop those blindfolds on, please? And I'm going to set the scene for you. Are you ready? Blindfolds on, please, and I'll tell you what's going to happen. It's late in the evening, and we're deep in the woods. All around you are the sounds of rustling and crunching as the wood comes to life with animals and insects and birds of all descriptions. But we want you to identify them by their sound. So which of you knows your woodland the best? And who's going to be the first to identify these woodland creatures? What you need to do is shout out your name when you think you know the right answer. Right. So are you ready? Shh! What's that sound? That's Steve. Oh. That was quick. Go on, Steve. That, that is the, uh, the song of the tawny owl. I'm going to give you that straight it's away. Quite, quite often, actually, you, you'll hear two birds calling to each other. One of them will go, quick, and the other will go, hoo, hoo, like that song there. Been practising that a lot, Steve. Well done. I have. It's getting later 
and it's getting darker. What can you hear next? Mackenzie. Go on, Mackenzie. That sounds like an angry farmer coming to tell you to get off his land. <laughs> I Unfortunately, that, that is not correct. So, Steve, oh. do you know? <laughs> Well, it's, it's a fox, isn't it? Yeah, do you know what sort of fox? Uh, that's going to be a... a, a I, I'm guessing that's a young fox? Well, it's a red fox. Yes. It might be angry. <laughs> well, we've really, we've really got one fox. kind of fox in this country. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's how much I know. All right, as we carry on through the night, what else can you hear? Whoa. Any guesses? Is that it? Do you hear it again? Yeah. That's terrifying. I don't um, know what... I, can, I, can I have a bit of a stab in the yeah, dark? Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> um, <laughs> Does it work? Could it be a distant, bellowing red deer? Uh, it's a muntjac deer. Muntjac deer. Uh, well, close, I'm going to give you that. Cigar. I'm going to give you that because it's a deer. The Is that all right to give you that? Yeah, yeah. Makes yeah. Such a horrible yeah. noise. That's amazing. That eerie bark, apparently they use it as an alarm call. So, right. Well, that's apparently. Right, night is coming to an end and dawn is breaking. So what's the first sound you hear in the morning? Uh, uh, Steve. Go on, Steve. It's blackbird. Oh, very good. Well done. That is one of the most common birds in Britain, so I'm glad you got that one right. <laughs> the sun continues to rise and the woodland just springs to life with the dawn chorus. What else can you hear? Mackenzie. Go on, Mackenzie. Is that a slug? <laughs> not, not a slug. Unfortunately, no, it's not a slug. Any ideas, Steve? It's a wren. It is a wren. Well done. Well, I'm, I'm afraid to announce that the scores there are <laughs> five to Steve and nil to Mackenzie, but we've got one more little passing creature. Oh, so, sorry. Go ahead and put it back on again. Put your blindfolds for just two more seconds. Eyes covered. Yep. And you've heard lots of things, but now we've got a little passing creature. So um, you're going to have to be really, really gentle with this, boys, OK? Just we don't want to frighten it. So I'm going to hold it in front of you. If you just touch down there, Mackenzie. Can you feel that? And Steve? Gently, gently, gently. What was that? <laughs> you didn't See give it? me a chance to actually yeah. touch it. Oh, yes, I know what that is. What is it? Are you going to have a guess, Mackenzie? Hang on. It's, it's, Any uh, ideas? <laughs> I'd say it was some kind of brush. <laughs> <laughs> I... Unfortunately, if you peep under your blindfold, yes, you're right. Right. It's a brush. <laughs> We're supposed to catch you out and think it was a hedgehog. Rubbish. Anyway, so the final scores, Steve 5 and Mackenzie nil. Sorry, Mackenzie, but That's thank right. you. Thank you. Let's have a round of applause for Mackenzie anyway. Thank you. <laughs> it, it just shows that I'm way, way, way too competitive for my own good, really, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? <laughs> right, we'll leave you late. We'll see you in a bit, Mackenzie. Thanks, Mackenzie. Now, bit. here on Live and Deadly, we're making it our mission to introduce you to 10 of the UK's deadliest 